I'm doing bless, bless, with yourself. Bless. Yes. So we're here at the Merge U. Can you tell us a little bit about what Merge U is? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, purpose of Merge U is to basically bring together faith and entertainment and to provide a entity for people who want to get into the business and aspirants um, to have that opportunity to be able to connect with people inside the business and to also be able to provide resources to help them get along the way. And so whether that's uh, networking, connections, but also giving them a spiritual foundation to make it in Hollywood. So that's the whole purpose of Merge You. We're merging it all together. Okay. Merging. Merging, <laughs> merging, I get that. So you offer a networking session. I've seen a lot of people that asking a lot of nice, really good questions to the people that are here. How did you pick your panel? Okay. Well, okay, so we wanted to have a panel that was diverse. Um, and we wanted to some a panel that actually gave people substance. So meaning that like we know there's a lot of people that if you're a producer or director, you want to get your scripts up or you want to shop the show or you are a musician, you want to get to that hit producer or to the label. And so our thing was that we wanted to bring people who could actually get you to the next level. And we've done big panels before, but when God gave me the, the vision for this, it was like, how can you take the people off of the stage and literally give people that direct contact? And that was our purpose of how we kind of selected the people we use. And then looking at our network and relationships and things like that. I'm here with casting agent Robbie Reed. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So what brought you here to um, link up with the Merge U? Well, I'm part of Merge U. I'm part of uh -huh, the Merge Summit. I'm co-founder okay. and co-chair with Holly. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what experiences have you what do they really want to get out of when they come here and they talk with you? What are one of the main People questions? Just, they have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of um, what do I do in the room? What it, what are some of your pet peeves? What is okay? Mm -hmm. What should my headshots look like? Should I memorize the lines? Should I hold the paper in my hand? How can I find a good agent? There's you know lots of questions like that. Do you have any classes to help with casting? I don't. I don't. I but I have classes that I recommend of. Um, uh, um, Teachers, you know, and instructors, um, directors that I like. I'm well. How are you? I'm good. We've been here and enjoying everything on the networking. What were some of your visions when putting this together? Um, I think for me, merge is really about empowering believers to um, network, to kind of connect with other believers and mainly to connect with influencers so that their gift and their vision gets out there. So tonight, which was put together by Lamont uh, and his team, was the first step to continuing the education of the merge and allowing people that are interested in getting into the business to have access consistently. What 
was the common question that people asked you when they were sitting down? Because they got to sit firsthand. It's not like it was, you know, raise your hand and you're in a, a, a big room of 80 people. I mean, this is very up close and personal. You got a lot of questions that were straight, you know, straightforward. What was a lot of the, what was one of the main questions that was asked? Uh, I think one of the main questions were, you know, how do you get into the network? How do you pitch your project? Um, how do you get an agent? Um, how can uh, I learn how to sell content? I think I think getting in the door and getting past that, you know, green light, or let me say, getting past the red light was really the the consensus tonight. And so, what are some of the future events you have for Merge You? I know there are some symposiums planned. Um, I heard you mention other states. What are some, what are some of the upcoming events that you have for Merge You? We're doing um, Merge Baltimore, which is a symposium. That's the symposium series, which are one day workshop, uh, one day masterclass sessions in different markets, uh, and then of, co of course the Merge You will continue creating roundtables like this throughout the year uh, to continue the learning, you know, access. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with the Merge You Symposium? Um, uh, a good friend of mine, Lamont, mm -hmm. Lamont Lee. Shout out to Lamont. Everybody keeps mentioning Lamont's name. He's the man of the hour. Yeah. Is, did I say his last name? Is it Lee? Lamont, anyway, Lamont, my homeboy from Detroit. I'm from Detroit. We went to the same high school, not at the same time. But uh, he reached out and told me about it, and uh, I happened to be here and available, and I was delighted to come out and take part. So I saw a lot of people get to ask you questions up first and personal, up close and personal from your experiences in the business. What was one of the main questions that you heard a lot tonight that they wanted to know when they got to sit down and talk to you? Um, a few of the main questions were centered around representation and how to handle rejection in the industry. And uh, I spoke to representation. There are a number of things you can do. Um, it's a good idea to get involved in some maybe some, some workshops or showcases. Uh, you have to find a opportunity, the best opportunity to showcase your work so that people can come see you and uh, kind of feel your work and feel you and then want to represent you. Uh, and with regards to rejection, I uh, encourage them not to carry that rejection or not let that rejection actually identify them as a person. So to kind of keep the two things separate. What um, are some of the films or, or, or TV shows and stuff that you've worked on that you have you have not been rejected for? Oh my, that I have not experienced. I have. I've been. Uh, I've been very pleased. Uh, very blessed. Um, I got my first gig on All My Children, uh, and then after that I did a number of uh, national commercials, and then Forever on ABC, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC, um, what is that, uh, Major Crimes on TNT, I did a role on there, uh, Scandal, yeah, your boy! <laughs> um, yeah, I did two episodes of Scandal. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I was in the Whitney, uh, the Whitney Houston movie on Lifetime. So I had a number of things just kind of pop up, and it's really great to uh, continue to do what I love and follow my passion and and uh, live my dream. Okay, and you got to share that with people that wanted to know. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. It's always important to give back. You know, I don't know it all, but what I do know, I offer. And changing up the format when you say it's more interactive and they're coming here they get to sit directly at the tables with everyone what do you do after that are there classes sometimes that you offer because I heard you mention earlier that you guys may be doing something in Baltimore so you're expanding the Merge You Foundation okay. so what it is is Merge You is a subsidiary of the Merge Foundation so like you're familiar they have the Merge Summit and now they're doing the Merge Symposium which is going to be uh, this year in Baltimore Atlanta I think I'm not sure what the third city is, but I know it's Atlanta and Chicago, uh, Atlanta and Baltimore. And the symposium would be what? So basically, it's going to be where we take certain key individuals in the industries, like what you see today, and then they're going to do different master classes, uh, such as I think there's a love and relationships one with like Devon Franklin and Megan Good. Um, and that's what that's kind of so that one's more no, so we can kind of get to the masses because with something like this we can only do so many people yeah so okay the merge handles 
where we can reach the masses and then the merge you is like the Bible study where it's the more intimate feeling. So what do you want everyone to walk away from here with once they sat down, talk with the people on the panels, talk with the people at the tables, talk with everyone? What do you think that they're walking away from here with? Um, I would say a shortness. You know, when I read a lot of the questionnaires, there was a lot of people who had questions about as far as whether they wanted to do the writing or whether they wanted to be an actor, um, how to get an agent. So. Our, we wanted to answer those questions, but give a lot of people also give them that that peace, you know, so that they don't have to jump around or they know what their purpose is. They know they understand what it is to be in this business, and then they understand that it's not about just chasing a dream, but chasing God. And so it was important. Like we have uh, Pastor uh, Naima from Hope in the Hills, and we have um, Holly, and we also have. Um, Minister um, Elect um, Jones as well so that we can give them a balance so that you can also where's your soul where's your spirit like if you're chasing this dream y'all here in Hollywood but in something exactly what are you living for because if you living for just this then you in for rude awakening so that's our whole thing is that we want people to have an assurance that they walk away confident in what they're doing and they're focused that's another thing that they're focused that they're not jumping all around so we made people like pick one category so no you're not going to be in you can't do the acting and the writing and the music you have to make a choice we're here from beauty and the beat and i wanted to talk to you about you coming to the emerge you summit today how was the experience for you oh it's been an awesome experience they're awesome um, I uh, received it from an email from another friend and I um, it was out for my son. He's an actor in the industry and I wanted to come out so we can do some networking to uh, find some more avenues for him. And what's your son? Yes, ma'am. Christian. So we met with Robbie Reed today, we met with Cornelius Smith, and we also met with uh, Edwin. Edwina. Yes. And it, it's been great just learning from everybody's experience and learning more uh, because he's been acting for a year now and God has really blessed him. And so just for us to be here has been a blessing in itself um, because you don't see many young actors that uh, get opportunities like this. So this has been just uh, phenomenal for me, you know, just soaking in all this information. And my thing is it's not just about him. It's about what God is doing with him and to share with other parents that may find it hard in the industry, you know, because we moved out here. Um, I relocated just for him. Yeah, just we moved from Virginia. I was prior military and I just retired. And we moved here for him because I saw that it was an interest. And I know uh, from birth the things that God could do with him. And, and he just uh, walked by faith and made that leap on out here. That's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate learning. I've learned a lot myself just by being here covering the event. And I look forward to coming to your next event. Thank you. Thank you. No. Are you making, like, I don't like that. Hi. What's going on? Beauty and the Beat Radio. We on live. Okay, so we're talking about some trending topics here. A little late. We're doing it out of order today because we can. We're going to talk about um, London Fashion Week. So, Jimmy Choo is entering into the sporting category where they had some men's wear, a men's line, suit line launch, and they had Jimmy Choo all over in the sporting lab and under the skateboards look at that that looks fun only in london huh that looks good they had them on bmx bikes and then they were in their suits and they were in their jimmy Choo sh tennis shoes and it's a sporting event so it's like high fashion couture suits but they're on the skateboard so it kind of gets into another genre a little bit Rock, what you do this weekend? Uh, I was sick. Why? Huh? Why were I you did, sick? I actually did a concert. Too. Where? Uh, over at the Huntington Beach Library. What kind of concert? Um, <laughs> I, concert. I was sick, so I was kind of out of it. Okay, I got and, you. Uh, I had the flu. And you over it? Because I don't want to catch the flu, right? Huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> 
Okay. I well, can't promise anything. Oh, okay. Well, I won't get too close. So we're going to, I want to start by congratulating the Warriors who shut down the finals last night and won for the championship. Did you watch it? No. I was you don't watch it? You so yeah. you just got automatically better today? I've been work. I've been moving too. So it's like I'm trying to move and I'm sick. I was throwing up. I mean, I was sick. So, so mm. yeah. I'm here for your, for your show though. So. Oh, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So we were going to talk about um, a couple of trending topics, and one of them would be, well, last week we talked about what transgenders and with Caitlyn Jenner or what have you, and this year, this year, this week we have transracial a little bit with the Rachel. Did you hear about that for the NAACP pairs in, yes. in Seattle? Yes. So she says she most identifies with being black not so much african-american but just most identified but she decided to step down uh, i i think they, they they went out of proportion with it because like i feel like that she does have black in her uh, background though her Where? great grandfather is black oh so if she has black in her and she she does her job regardless mm -hmm. of anything why mm -hmm. are you fronting her because she's she has white in her mm -hmm. she's doing her job she mm -hmm. has no you got all these black people that are in there that steal, that mm -hmm. do stuff they ain't supposed to do. And she's doing what she's, she's supposed to do. She has nothing negative against her but, you know, what they're trying to pull up. So mm -hmm. now you find that. That's what you're going to pull. Black mm -hmm. people, man, I swear. Mm -hmm. When things are going good, you want to find something to have a problem with. Regardless. She's well, it's her, her parents job. that have ex exposed that. I mean, I guess the thing about her ethnicity. I need to shut them down. She's oh. doing her job. Okay. Regardless, she's, she's doing... A job for us right I got you and doing a good job for us so why are you giving her flack because she's not black it don't matter so is it reverse we got black racism people that, we got black people yeah it is because mm. we got black people that are in there doing doing things they ain't supposed to do so oh. if she's doing a good job let her do her job okay okay another thing that came up in the news this week is Zane, um Lamar Odom's really good friend if you remember him from keeping up with the Kardashians and Sanguthai, I think it's his last name, Jamie, mm -hmm. he passed away from a, ho uh, a heroin overdose. And I know all that speculation that that was like his friend that was with him at the time when they said that was bringing him into that drug circle or whatever. They were trying to keep it away from the show. But every time he was the roommate on the show and, you know, they kept trying to separate that relationship. But he was like, that's been my best friend since I don't know if he went back to high school or post high school or whatever mm -hmm. but they've been friends for a long time but he passed away from a heroin overdose this past week wow. so i don't know how that's gonna affect lamar i haven't seen him in the news period yeah i remember like, that video they did mm -hmm. what yeah. video it was a uh, lamar Odin had did a video with him and oh was, with jamie yeah and he was kind of like out of it at the time he did the video it was kind of weird weird yeah he was rapping and just ah, oh ah, yeah and stuff. yeah 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 but that was on and they did show that and it was like they shouldn't have put that on camera yeah. but i think somebody yeah yeah, so I know that's going to affect him kind of hard. Maybe it'll wake him up and then draw a conversation so that he could kind of talk about it or, or kind of get something good out of it versus making it a negative situation. But, um, that's what's going on. What else you got? What else I got? <laughs> uh, Tim McGraw. <laughs> that's a, other than the inspection, what's up with Tim McGraw? <laughs> He's surprising a veteran on every stop in his 2015 tour with a mortgage-free home wow i need that right there and you're a veteran yeah i need that right there so when tim mcgraw comes to your city <laughs> you need i don't to... think anybody goes to my city well <laughs> he might well i do live in the country they might come out there's a lot of cowboys out there it is yeah riverside horses and cows out there <laughs> oh and a lot of factories yeah. they say you have more smog in riverside in the empire in the empire period yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's like in a closed-in area. There's mountains all around it, so I think that's why. Mm-hmm. Small gets in there and don't go down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's get into our one-on-one -on -one video that we have with um, Harmony. Mm -hmm. When she's at the full video, we're going to launch later, but we just want to tease you with some of that. All right, all right. Here we go. Okay. here with Grammy Award winning singer, well no, composer, producer, songwriter, 
<laughs> He's like, yes, and there's more. <laughs> no. no, okay. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes we get You're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like building it up. Harmony Samuels. They call you H Money. Where'd you get the name H Money from? Um, it was actually in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, like ten years ago, mm -hmm. I used to live over there. Okay. And um, it was a particular summer, and a guy was like, um, he was like, every time I see you, you just look like money. Mm. And I was like. Really? He's like, I'm not calling you Harmony anymore. I'm gonna call you H Money. So Harmony is like, it's it reminds you of music. Which is your real name, Harmony? Yeah. So you were born to do music. Your parents knew when you come, you right? Well, yeah. My mother knew from my from when I was in the womb, I was gonna do music for sure. For sure, cause she used. Um, I read something that she was a singer as well, not professionally, but she could sing. And then your father did music as well. Yeah, my so, father was a musical uh, uh, professional back in Nigeria. Okay. And he played for a very big band back in the day, and um, in over there, and they toured with Fela and a bunch of other people. So mm -hmm. He was he was very musical and still plays, still still a drummer and percussionist. So. so do you guys have little jam sessions? We haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> when we was younger, we I used to definitely, you know. Mm -hmm. So you were a self-taught musician. I mean, you, mm. you learned how to play the piano. And what other instruments do you play? Um, you know, standard. Keyboard, uh, Keyboard. Keys, drums, bass, guitar, and, you know, uh, a couple wind instruments whenever I can get my mind around. Wow. <laughs> so did you take any lessons for it? And all like just no. to sharpen your skills or you just self taught all this time? You picked up things and you I mean, at the age of four, mm -hmm. um, I, I pretty much have a visual thing where I can watch something and then pick it up. Mm -hmm. And then due to either discipline or just the way I was brought up, I would spend loads of time and just never giving up on it. But mm -hmm. I really was self-taught. Like I really, I never, we couldn't afford when, when I was young, I, we, my parents just couldn't afford the, the lessons, lessons okay. or, and then at one particular point, my parents, cause my dad never really had the best experience in the music industry mm -hmm. when he was in it. Um, he might fought against me doing music. Aww. So like that makes you like, probably try harder. To yes. it. Okay. And the only time I really kind of got allowed to be in music was when I went to church. Okay. So you know I was in church as much as possible. It's like I'm see. going to church, Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And she, and she was like, and she was like, all right, cool. And she, you know, it was kind of my getaway to kind of play. I heard that you actually were a musical director in your church. Did yeah. you were? Still have a musical director to this very day. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I was. I when I, at a very young age of twelve, I was a music director at my church. So how did you transition? It seems like you knew early on you wanted to do music. You stuck with. It, you had discipline for it. How did you transition being in the UK to start working with such notable artists out there? Um, well, it, first of all, you know, I started off as an intern and, you know, you know, pouring coffee and mm -hmm. cleaning up plates and going at four o'clock or four, 4 a.m. runs to go and get food for <laughs> everybody who needed food. But um, I guess a lot of my, my beginnings started with, you know, just interacting with local talent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, that led to I had a gift that kind of working with local talent and them blowing up mm -hmm. you know what i mean in the uk and then finally i was able to i made some good relationships at radio stations our urban radio station um choice of at the time and it led to me having a radio show with my boy scotty being there and who's a we had an after the night show oh, and we would see beauty and the beast not the only one doing radio what was the name of your radio show uh it was like the after party the after party okay yeah and it was just basically we would we was we was the continuation of when the clubs were done. Okay, and so then, like you were at the two a.m. type of hour. Two hour, two a.m. and it was like it was like, I remember one day uh, I was like, bro, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> but um, no, it was fun, and you know we got to ex play some of our own music, and mm -hmm. we just built a buzz on the streets. And you know I was working with a bunch of rappers and UK artists that uh, you know became very established. One of them is named Chipmunk, who mm -hmm. now is known as Chip, who. Mm -hmm. Uh, broke out and did a humongous record with me and Chris Brown called mm -hmm. Champion mm -hmm. back in 2010. Okay. So, no, 11, 2010, 11. And, and you know, kind of like the UK was a very, very difficult place because it was in, in, in music sense because we had limitations to being black. You know, being black and being in the music industry, it was difficult because there was only so far you could go with it. So Why is that? What would you say? Because it was a... a uh, urban music and just black music in England wasn't in at the time 
she big, mm -hmm. you know, and America was so powerful in the way they present music that mm -hmm. we just wasn't up to par. Mm -hmm. So it was like, if it didn't come from over there, then, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and even American music, culturally, only some of it came over. So, you know, the top, the, the, the top 40 artists came over, like, you know, Destiny Shaw, mm -hmm. Total, maybe not, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, TLC, mm -hmm. but 702, maybe, you know right. what I'm saying? So you can understand, like, you know, you know, there's only certain things that came over and, you know, lack of internet, lack of things and the internet breaking kind of merged the world together and we was able to have some cohesiveness. But, you know, back then it was really difficult. You know, it was always like one every couple of years, of, you know, black artists would break into mm -hmm. pop mainstream in the UK. I mean, the UK urban market at that time was only like 5%, maybe 4% of the, the whole UK market. What type of music do you like work with best? Like, cause you have a range of talent. You work with hip hop artists in the UK as well as here. Then, I mean, one of my favorite songs, um, Fantasia, you worked on her album. I mean, right now you've worked with what Sierra? Who are some of the artists that you work with that you can name? Uh, so many. Uh, Chris Brown was kind of like my first breakout artist okay. in in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, my first placement, like when I got to LA, was Maroon Five mm -hmm. on Hands All Over. This song called No Curtain Call. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I work on every platform from pop to country mm -hmm. it, you know movie scoring like i have no limitations because for me music was always kind of like my uh outlet mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i had a very strange upbringing so my only outlet in music was music the only outlet i had was music so i would put all i felt into music i would mm -hmm. put everything i experienced into music mm -hmm. and i never because i could play i never felt like oh if i heard something i had this I have this gift where I can just listen to something and play it back and mm -hmm. people are like how do you do that I'm like I don't know it's like I could just see numbers and colors mm -hmm. and I can un like understand exactly what it is mm -hmm. so so how did, what, did you get introduced to Rodney Jerkins or how did Rodney Jerkins get in touch with you because I heard that was like a big changing point of you moving from the UK to Los Angeles what was that experience that experience was crazy because that was that was me knowing that God really had plans for me to be successful mm -hmm. because I didn't go looking for Rodney right. in fact that year Someone had said, would you sign to a producer? I was like, hell no. I would never sign to a producer mm -hmm. because I'm a music producer. Why would I do that? It's crazy. Right. And lo and behold, mm -hmm. I signed to a producer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but he was, in a, he was in a very, very important meeting. And my music was being played in the door next to him. Okay. And he said, every time he tells me the story, I laugh because I think, really? Like, he said he would be distracted because he'd be like, who is, who's record? Who's pounding this record mm -hmm. and he got up and said you know he told the person he was having a meeting with who was a very established person as well uh, executive and he's like look give me a second i need to go to the bathroom i'll be back and he went to the room the music's coming out no of way. and says whoever this kid is find him and bring him to me right. and i was just landing in la that time i was trying to figure it out mm -hmm. it was i was on i was hoping dreaming right. believing i was like i was in la for no apparent reason trying to figure out where <laughs> let me just figure out going and i had a particular i came for a particular meeting which mm -hmm. went terribly wrong mm -hmm. and at the same on at the same breath as one person was letting me down another you person know. picked me up and we're back so we're gonna go into um that tyrant on the red carpet because his um new video was dropping this week or his new ep going up you want to play um Tyrant on the red carpet and watch the video. Okay, we'll do that. My PR, uh, you know what I'm saying, found out about it and let me open it. When I heard about it, I was down to do it. I was like, of course I want to be with that. Of course I want to come support, of course. So you just did a performance at Power 106 this what? A couple days ago? A couple days ago. Couple days ago. Power, yeah. It was amazing. It was, it was cool. It was, a, it was actually a great accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the Bay. You know, it's already out there. Like we, we, it's like, it's kind of like we're stuck in our own little world. You know what I'm saying? So me just coming out of that, you know what I'm saying? It's just amazing. You know what I'm saying? You live out here now or are you still in the Bay? No, I'm still in the Bay. Most definitely. You're performing tonight, right? Performing tonight. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. What do um, platforms like Musicology like, mean to you? Uh, this is great. Actually, um, the, way, the way I even got introduced to this opportunity tonight, I came to a Musicology event and uh, I met Brittany Boston, who runs this. That's where I uh, met her at, was a Musicology event. 
So this event is it's great networking and it's just great to get some inspiration and learn for, for people who are trying to learn how to get in the industry. You know, you get some insight from people who are in the industry and trying to come up themselves. So, and you get to meet a lot of executives yourself. Definitely. So things like this are monumental to anybody from whatever platform you're trying to break into, whether it's on the entertainment side or the executive side. And for me, anytime somebody feels that I might have some perspective that's valuable to them, I appreciate opportunities like this to share. What brings you out tonight? Well, I did music college here earlier this year, and um, I'm just a big fan of what they're all about, and I always support Brittany and everything that she's doing. So. so what do platforms like this, when you're speaking, what kind of advice do you like to give to uh, people there? Because there's so many people that are just wondering, like, what can they get from the executives or the people on the panel, being that you spoke on a panel before? I, I really try to give them information and insight on the mental aspect of getting through the business. Because uh, there, there's a technical aspect that you can get from online and, you know, various uh, resources. But the mental aspect is the hardest thing to get through in the music business. The ups and downs, the broken promises, but staying focused on your dream. You know? Is that what a lot of questions are that people ask you? Uh, kind of, but I, I, I try to like, mix a little of that in there just so that they get that piece of information while they're, while they're here. Yes. And we're back, so we're going to go into some new music, and then we're going to, um, no? No new music? Okay. Yes, right. play new music. Play Tyron Brown's video. Baby, won't you come you got a new music coming up. Okay, so that's it. We're tonight right just ready to get some inspiration in City commitment, just call me Mr. Brown. Play me in the club, the hoes be like, This my song. Then they come up to me like, See what type of shit you on? Ha, baby girl, you wanna find out? Bring your pretty ass over here, we finna ride out. Gonna have a at the party back in my house, and then we gon' get it in after that. I'm out, cause I'm headed for success. Take your shit to the next level, cause I'm blessed. The swag that had a bad one's ready to undress, and I ain't saying I'm the best, I'm just better than the rest. Yes, so they pass it like collection place. I ain't heard about it, better check the resume Always in the club getting it poppin' When them lights come on and they stop it yeah. you, can, you can turn the lights on Tell the bar it's the last call We still going up Yeah, we still going up Tell your girl that you come through Cause I'm still trying to fuck you We still going up Yeah, we still going up The young nigga that's on that other shit I drive the ladies crazy, they can't get enough of this You know how many of them begging me to run up in them Trying to convince me that you different from these other women But, look, look, little mama, stop that Sitting at my table trying to show me you could pop that On the same page, baby, throw a couple shots back You ain't gonna win the award, little mama, do not act But, if you ain't a freak, then I'ma teach you When I eat you, I'ma have you screaming Jesus like a preacher But then I gotta leave you, baby, you was nice to meet you Niggas hating on my ballin' cause they sitting by the bleachers Back, back to me and you though Fly it in the motherfucker, roll with me to Pluto About to knock it out the park like Albert Pujols My at the party, that's the only place to go yeah, yeah. You, can, you can turn the lights on Tell the bar it's the last call We still going up Yeah, we still going up Tell your girl that you come through Cause I'm still trying to fuck you We still going up Y 
Y'all know this when the real function begins. I'm saying we can get it in, we can we can get it in. We can get it in, we can we can get it in. Come on, you know the business, baby, don't pretend. Trying to roll with you and your friends. I'm saying we can get it in, we can we can get it in. We can get it in, we can we can get it in. You can you can turn your lights on. Tell the bars the last call. We still going up. Yeah, we still going up. Tell your girl that you come through. Cause I'm still trying to fuck you. We still going up.